Hey everyone, we're going to talk about the uh, Stargate computer from OpenAI, where they're going to go into um, perplexity once they start serving ads. And <laughs> then um, Apple's cringy, like spatial vision pro recognition person. Cringy? And it's cringy. And then Logan is leaving OpenAI. Um, and then is... What's he doing? I know. Is recruiting going to go full AI? Are you going to get re rejected by an AI recruiter? And then someone's PDoom score is 99.9%. Anyways, oh my. this is the sick podcast. We're two guaranteed uh, doom. Guaranteed doom. We're two former Googlers. Um, if you like business, AI, and comedy takes, this is your show. Hit the like and subscribe comedy. button. Exactly. And no, I am not going to be robbing a liquor store after this. Um, Airbnb <laughs> has reached out to me a while back and with them on like how to get a. Uh, AI bots working in HR use cases. And so I got to talk to them a few times. And then, you could you know, be a superstar on the consulting circuit because who else in HR knows what the heck's going on? Um, I remember I posted on Reddit in some HR form. Hey, we're trying to integrate uh, AI into customer service for HR, like easy questions like, what have you all been doing? And I got like the mod of the group was like, stop spamming your AI peers, stop pitching this crap. It's never going to take wow. our jobs. And I was like, whoa, like, tight, bro, I've done the pitch. And, um, but let's get to the, the AI stuff. So, um, Microsoft and OpenAI are playing a data center project that could cost as much as $100 billion and include an artificial intelligence supercomputer called Stargate, according to a media report on Friday. The companies did not immediately respond to Reuters' request for comment. The information reported that, that Microsoft would likely be responsible for financing the project, which would be 100 times more costly than some of the biggest current data centers, sending people involved in a private conversations with the proposal. This goes to Sam Altman's point, everything le leaks in tech. Like there's a lot of people who are not familiar with tech and like, oh, new Jimmy Apple so there's AGI. And there's a conspiracy. Everything leaks internally. in tech, especially on the research side, unless you work for Apple. Exactly. With Apple, they'll straight up chop your arm. No, no. They when you get a roll of Apple, Joe, you can attest to this. They first ask about like where your family lives, your cousins live, and whatnot. And they let and then once they hire you and they say, you know, you leak and they die. And they you know, <laughs> that's what it works out. You know, they're, be they're a shame old. if something were to happen to them. It'd be a shame something happened to grandma. How's grandma liking mm -hmm. her iPad? It'd be a shame if like the glass broke and went into her eyes. Just just saying. Anyways, you know, talk to you later. <laughs> um, OpenAI's next major AI upgrade is expected to land by next year. The report said, adding that Microsoft executives are looking to launch Stargate as soon as 2028. So they mentioned OpenAI's next major Microsoft. Ma oh, go to your point, your poor Microsoft comment. Go for it. Well, they're, they're at the mercy of OpenAI, right? Mm -hmm. Waiting for a, a, a new model. And at the same time, they've got all these internal people, executives, whatever you want to call them, uh, trying to do something interesting. But the truth is they're all really just waiting for open AI. I mean, they can't, for whatever reason, they can't figure out how to build their own models at the scale that open AI builds them, despite being the compute behind those models. I mean, they're running those models. How frustrating is that? They're running them but they can't reverse engineer them and build their own. <laughs> you got a video of that guy because he is just hilarious. I don't know anything about him, but his, his short clips have are you, so funny. Have you watched the full video with the original uh, dialogue? No, I've just seen the ones where they do, Joe, you know, they, they voice it over Joe, with something else. You've made major interventions in my life. I can go on for 10 hours. I'm going to make an intervention in your life. I'm going to send you the version. Please. And it's the funniest story. The story is hilarious. Post in and the show notes. Yeah. Rest in peace. That. I forgot his name, but he's fantastic. But yes. Didn't you mention like they, they're they running these models on their servers and they still can't like reverse engineer how they work? <laughs> right. And and from the opposite direction, they're building really interesting training approaches and refined data sets for smaller models, which is great. I mean, that's a that's a great contribution. And they're building interesting frameworks and and cascades, whatever you want to call them, but uh, ways of using the language models to do something in multiple steps, which is also great. Uh, all kinds of agent stuff, fantastic, but just fundamentally building their own large scale language model for whatever reason, it's just not in their DNA. They can't figure it out. Right. And so, I mean, they, they've had a, over a year now to like build something. Right, and here they are funding Mistral and Anthropic, and I'm sure there's talent from those companies going around. So here's the question, though. like, Is Satya in his in the back of his mind? He's like, yes, we need to build our own, but like, there's so many other things that we need to take care of on the business side to get these models in the hands of enterprise customers that like... Oh, there's no way well, 
that Satya is satisfied with the current situation. Okay. I mean, yeah. someone someone asked him about this, and he he gave some quote, which is going to kind of come back to bite him with the regulatory people. But he gave some quote about, you know, we're we're over them, we're under them, we're around them, like we're involved in everything around OpenAI. So if mm. they lose any researchers, we'll hire them. You know, we're Jesus. supporting them. We're using their stuff. But he he made some statement about above, below, and around, and so on. And the funny part about it is it, it gave you an, an insight into his strategy and how you know, willing they are to spend money and invest time to be in every part of this system. However, it also made it clear they're not in them. They don't really understand them. There's mm -hmm. something magic happening at OpenAI and maybe at Anthropic that Microsoft has not figured out yet, which is kind of outrageous. You'd think they'd be able to go and hire a few key researchers and diffuse whatever this tacit knowledge is that they don't have into the rest of their org. It's got to mm -hmm. be frustrating, Satya. Oh, it is. Not to and mention the Kevin Scott. They're both probably pissed off about it right now. Kevin Scott, great dude. Um, I know I agree they are pissed because it's like we're be beholden to a team of a thousand plus employees and we're basically their 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 beck and call where they're where they're blank check. They're kind of calling the shots, and this is just a really awkward spot to be in. And then when that yeah. drama happened with the whole board takeover, it was like, Jesus Christ, like if this was internal, well, it never would have happened internally. But if there's any VP who went rogue, Satya would be like, oh, you're fired. Like, <laughs> like well, problem solved. Not only that, but if, if Microsoft had succeeded in understanding this uh, tacit knowledge and diffusing it in their own organization, OpenAI can blow up and they would just shrug and be like, oh, well, we'll just carry on without them. Right. No, that's true. Instead, like you said, they, they have to you know, have a three alarm fire and figure out how to fix it. Exactly. So what do you think about Mustafa coming over? It's like you think Mustafa's a solve there because the, Mustafa came in quickly. They got rid of that VP of uh, AI for Bing or whatnot. And got, he's, he's gone. <laughs> Mustafa brought his R&D person. Supposedly they have good chops because that inflection AI model is supposed to be decent. I haven't played with it. So you think that's you, th you think Satya thinks this is going to help them with that issue? I'm sure he's hope he's hoping it will help. I mean, yeah. if he has to buy the people, he'll do it. There's something else going on at OpenAI, and I, it's, it was funny because someone asked Sam about this in a recent interview, and it, and he quoted Ilya and even admitted that he would probably butcher the quote, but essentially he said something to the effect that it's not one thing that makes their models really good. It's a couple hundred things that are independent and yet reinforcing uh, such that the result is really powerful. Ooh, so basically it's... lots of little improvements that multiply. Yeah. So it's basically the uh, Colonel Sanders 37 secret season, se secret spices that are mixed into the chicken perfectly that make it so good, which is also a funny story about Colonel Sanders. Actually, my friends, oh, no. my best friend's dad um, was in New York a long time ago, and his dad was like, son, I want you to meet a great man. And he's like, who is this, Papa? This is Colonel Sand Sanders, oh, no. and I imagine Colonel Sanders like, I, I do declare, who is this young one here? And I gave him a handshake, so he shook the hand of Colonel Sanders. Is like, and I told him, it's like, from a black man to a white man, like, I, that is the most like honorable thing that you could ever do. Like, that's the most important thing you possibly do. It's like for me, it's like the meeting contribution Colonel Sanders, of good fried chicken. Yeah, meeting Colonel Sanders, MLK, Caesar Chavez, um, and then probably yeah, the the guy who made uh try three try, three locos. Where the mix oh, Trace. Mix, Trace Locos, that guy too. <laughs> but anyways, the, the, the Colonel Sanders uh, was got pissed when they franchised the operation. Oh yeah. Um, they his his secret to making the gravy is when you make the fried chicken, all the little morsels and flakes, you grab those and you mix it the in the gravy. It, it giblet it makes it off the hook. Well. The franchise said because it's like the food, the man, the food inspector said you couldn't do that anymore. So instead, <laughs> they had to do like some type of paste or whatever. The I'm hell trying it is. to imagine a food inspector in the deep south. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, I wonder what that is. Is like, is the food cooked or like? I mean, I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> like, is there's no sound. Any customers great. dead? Exactly. Are they, well, they only have a stomach issue. That's fine. That's okay. Can you imagine telling some customers? Our food is so good that a couple of our customers died recently. You'd have lines around the block. You'd have people just lining up. Like, they killed a few people. This has got to be good. 
I mean, literally, it reminds me of freaking like Golden Gate Bridge when during the Depression, people were, were so desperate for work, they were watching the, the workers and the workers who fell and like to their death. And the workers were like, I want that job. Give me that job now. Oh, that job. Like, yeah. was, so, uh, another thing, a random note there was a horror movie made in like the 1930s or 40s called The Tingler. And it was about like before you die, you feel the you feel the tingle. And what some of these producers would do is they would go into certain theaters and put a vibrating thing oh, under the seats and just nice. tur- turn it on for one person. The person run out freaked out, whatnot, like thinking they're gonna get genius. killed. Yeah, so it gave him PTSD, but then it helped sell more tickets. But anyway, so yeah, Colonel you Sanders you can't do stuff like that nowadays. No, you can't. It's just, that's a, that's when men and women were men and women, true true people, get things done. Now we're all just and the sheep were scared. Exactly. So going back to Colonel Sanders, last point, uh, he would go to some KFCs, our franchise, and order a meal and have the chicken was okay, and then he would have the gravy and he would like spit it out and he would walk up to like the store manager and throw it on the ground and like cuss him out, saying this is very an abom- theatrical, an abomination. Could you imagine if you? You were at KFC, and you see Colonel Sanders cussing someone out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, I'll stop. Okay. What does this uh, have to do with AI? I've lost track of anything. I know we I've lost track. About. We just okay. We're uh, we'll keep this in. Um, let's go back to where we were for, for Stargate and everything. Um, oh so, yeah, Stargate. Yes. Okay. Open AI's next major AI upgrade is expected to land next year. So it says next major AI upgrade expected to land by early next year. So I don't know what that means. If they mean like they think that's going to be GPT five. That's going to be a new functionality, like vision, or sorry, not vision, uh, the voice cloning or Sora. This is just so, PT Barnum, like keep yeah. the public's attention. No, they're they're perfect at that. That's what the Shapiro's yeah. love. Adding that, Microsoft executives are looking to launch Stargate as soon as 2028. The proposed U.S.-based supercomputer will be the biggest in a series of installations the companies are looking to build over oh, the next God, six years. Shut up. Who cares? The report added the information attributed to tentative cost of 100 billion to a person who's my data center is bigger than your bigger data your, center. <laughs> it's a, it's a dick measuring contest. <laughs> it totally is. Like, who cares? <laughs> Nobody cares. What's that internet meme? Nobody cares. The, the Beethoven version. I don't know. I have to get up. Someone tell Nobody me in the comment cares. section what the sound bite. Nobody okay, so cares. this is interesting. Gen AI search engine perplexity has a plan to sell ads. Uh, Gen AI search engine perplexity, which claims to be a Google competitor, recently snagged seventy three million Series B funding from investors like Jeff Bezos. Um, perplexity uses AI to answer questions. These related questions, which account for forty percent of Perplexity's queries, are where the company remember when start getting introducing funding ads. of seventy-three million would have been a big deal. I, that was hilarious. I was going to say seventy-three million, boring. That's nothing. That's a that's a rounding error. You know, and these and, kooks are getting billions at a time. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, I'm saying Mustafa isn't a, a kook, but he got like a billion plus for like inflection. He's a yeah, kook. I, I'm just gonna, of dollars. Come on. I know he he does look like a Bond villain. There's a CNBC interview where he's wearing like he's in a ski resort and he has this little <laughs> white thing, and I was like, it looks like a Bond a villain. Suit on. Yeah, and then freaking John Stewart stole my joke. He later on said he looks like a Bond villain. I'm like, God damn it. Um, okay, so uh, are you upset that John Stewart I mean, stole it's your good, joke, it's or are stolen... you concerned that you're thinking along the same lines as John Stewart? And Ooh, his that's writers? a good question. I mean, well, after his his AI episode, which is really bad, I'm more not upset, but I'm just more. Well, at least it's like a compliment. That's he, he, my line. Are there of any public figures that have a good take on AI and ML? Okay, there was a guy journalist who was interviewing. I'm really narrowing it down again. He was interviewing Jeffrey Hinton. And mm. this journalist would read up on the topic and oh, ask yeah. really informed questions. And I, yeah, it was t- like a BBC interview or something. The guy like had it, like all this background just I tr- organized. He was like, "Oh, so in the 1940s, weren't they trying to do something in neural nets?" I was like, "What? What type of journalist is this? This is great." So where did this guy come from? Exactly, and they put him back in some factory. He's gone. Now. I was He's watching uh, Andrew Huberman interview Robert Greene. Which okay. I think is like you know crossing the streams or something, right? Uh, but at any rate, they got on some riff in the middle of the interview, you know, because of course the interview was three and a half hours long. Oh Jesus! And <laughs> that's how podcasts go nowadays. And he, they they got on the topic of AI. It was like both of them were against it because kids wouldn't learn how to do things the hard way and therefore wouldn't be good at stuff. I was just baffled. I was like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, the argument they were making was essentially an argument against pocket calculators. Mm-hmm. You yeah. Know, it was like, well, kids won't know how to do long multiplication. No, they won't. Exactly. Get Nobody over it. Cares. And Nobody al- cares. Also, if you want to hear something really great, I have the 48 Laws of Power. I have the uh, limited edition $100 copy here at my desk. Uh-oh. I love the book. Robert Green fanboy. 
it, so I'll say it like this. Um, I'm not Alex Friedman who's like, whatever Robert Greene, if, well, whatever Elon oh, Huberman Musk is says. apparently on team Robert Greene too. He was, his introduction was like, this guy's a god. A knighthood. I mean, it was just like hagiography. Well, well, Huberman, have you read his stuff after 48 Laws of Power? Like he just gets more and more rambly and crazy, kind of like how I talk. <laughs> so uh, my thing though is, if you want to hear something super crazy, the Robert Greene was like, all these people who want to live longer and you know don't want to die are just like narcissist narcissists the old greek greek myth and they're just mm-hmm. they're just egoistic mm-hmm. and they're kind of like assholes and everything and i'm like wait time out bro like first of all stop self projecting yourself into why you <laughs> want to live forever i don't yep. know about you but imagine think of the greatest people you've known in your life who are awesome smart well put together model citizens who worked hard saw the earth people and then they get some malignant tumor or something, and they die, yep. and, and science and God takes them away from us too early. Imagine mm-hmm. if they were still here. Imagine this too. They had their kids. Kids grow up. They're now in grandpa age, but they're still fit as a fiddle because of some magical science. Now can live to 150, 160. And now they say, you know what? I think I want to raise kids again. Let's go down to that orphanage and pick up two kids. I, I, I know. I make it sound so like This is the know. Elon Musk life plan. Oh, I didn't know that. But I was going to say, let me – Let's go. Let me go mentor. Let me go help more people. I have I'm now have much mm. finances. I can go spend time just build rebuilding and helping society. And so, yep. if Huberman wasn't on uh, Green's crank, he would just be just like, say, well, can you make an opposite of your case and explain like the good reasons for people living much longer and not just falling apart? And also, are you then against vaccines? Are you then against like um, antibiotics that you know prevent people from like dying much earlier? Please don't people message me about COVID vaccine. I just bring up a case. Um, are you, you against it up, people? Man. You could are you against any, any analogy you wanted. Ah, uh, what's a good one? Can people die? People can die appendicitis, right? So like sure. you say, hey, are you against people getting their appendix removed when they could possibly die of appendicitis? Like like take this to your, your logical extent of what, you, what you're what against for like uh, extending lifespans of humans. And usually what it is is people are like, oh, I'm okay for all the technology before me. But any of this new fangled technology, no, 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 that's voodoo. You're playing God or something. So I don't know. I, it's kind of weird too because Green was discussing his his stroke, which is apparently pretty aggressive. Yeah. And the paramedics arrived in the scene and saved his life. Mm-hmm. He doesn't seem against any of that life saving technology. No, no, it's it, it's it's really it's really unfortunate. So, um, but yeah, going back to perplexity. So they're going oh, yeah. to, they're going to try to sell ads. Um, it wasn't clear though if if I pay premium, if it's an ad free experience. I assume it will be an ad free experience. But if they go, you hope it'll be an ad free. I experience. hope it will. If it isn't, then we're screwed. Because then you feel like the the internet's kind of moved though away from this. I mean, before we thought you had to be, you had to have ads. People wouldn't pay for yeah. anything, and now more and more people seem okay with paying for subscriptions to their favorite stuff. Yeah, I think ChatGPT. ChatGPT, right? They prove that. Like once they put yeah. up. A, a, ChatGPT Plus, they're like, yeah, just like give us twenty dollars and you might get something better. And I'm like, sure, <laughs> here. It's so dirt cheap for what yeah. you're getting. Oh my god, they could raise they could raise the price to hundred, two hundred, probably three hundred bucks a month or something. And people Facebook's in the same people. mode, right? They're yeah. trying to charge people if they don't want to see ads. Exactly. So I'm willing, like, I'm willing to pay for an ad free experience. Um, and so, but I, perplexity makes me think, like, maybe. Their move, what wouldn't happen is their best fit is to be inside of OpenAI, but OpenAI is probably like, well, I'm not going to acquire you because you're basically using our tech and some scaffolding. So they're really in a tight spot, and I think Google and OpenAI and Bing Damn, can, looks can like put, we're in a tight spot. Exactly. Can put the squeeze on them once they start doing more generative AI answers and search. What they're are your thoughts? definitely in an ugly strategic position. Like mm-hmm. OpenAI or Google or Microsoft could... could uh, duplicate, copy their UI features, and it would be ugly for them. Yeah. You know, I think they're, they're, they'll be done. I'm trying to get the CEO to be on here. He seems like a really good dude. Um, I but feel the, like OpenAI is starting to copy perplexity in the chat GPT interface. Like it's starting to do references and it's leaning that way. Yep. I, I, I actually have some research that I was going to include where I asked it, can you research something for me and pull some sources? And it does it already. So mm. their situation was like, could you get acquired quickly and get out? And now they're trying to go for a long-term game of, hey, everyone, you want another helping of ads? So um, let's go to our next story, which is Apple. Um, they're making the uncanny valley mistake here at Vision Pro. Apple Apple brings spatial oh, persona. So? 
yeah, Apple uh, brings spatial persona avatars of Vision oh, Pro. Oh, this story. Field. Yes, 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 yes. Apple is making Vision Pro. Their paper about uh, no, 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 no. That paper was bomb. Whoever the, we're gonna get to that yeah. paper. That paper was baller. It was really good. Um, yeah, we'll get to that later. Um, so Meta has tackled virtual collaboration similarly with Horizon Workrooms, which let let me interact with virtual companions and AR using HoloLens. Like Vision Pro itself, spatial personas seem a bit more refined from Microsoft's 2021 technology. You can enable or disable them at will from FaceTime call, and Apple says everyone will be able to adjust content how they like without affecting their virtual companion, how they will see it. I virtual found, companion? I know, right? It's my, my life partner. I found Apple's personas oh a bit creepy and robotic during my my Vision Pro review. The company has steadily improved them to be better to capture different facial expressions. I agree. So let's watch this. There's no sound on this though. But um, let's see. Can I? I'm not gonna. Whatever. See. Look at. Okay. There. There she is. That is creepy. Uh, yeah. Is it explaining a web page to me? Is that what's happening? And now you have this guy. Oh, there's two of them. There's two of them, man. It's a bad, it's a bad acid trip. <laughs> the walls are melting. Even worse, you know, they're going to have ones for other people. And so we're all going to be uh, meta style sitting in a virtual conference, talking to each other with our avatars representing yeah. us. So exactly. we can secretly be in our pajamas at home. Who's real? Who isn't real? God and damn it. It, it. It's crazy. And also it's really, what they need to do is, what corporations don't understand is you kind of need to lean into your weirdness or what your limitation is. <laughs> and right now we know that these AIs are still jank and we still can't, it's, you can still tell if, if an AI is generated or whatnot, like a, a, it's a deep fake or something. Instead, what they should do is make the persona like Clippy, make the persona cartoony, make the persona like a little robot that showed up with Jensen on, on stage and it was really cute and bubbly. Make it mm -hmm. like that. The more cartoony you make, and better like Disney people, Disney style people then set their expectations of oh this is like a cute AI persona now instead of them looking at it and saying you're not real and you're oh, sterile this is why you were talking about the uncanny valley because if it looks too much like a person then yeah. people expect it to look completely like a person but also to be exactly reasoning like a person just like when Lex Friedman was talking to Zuckerberg in their new Oculus Rift uh, virtual conference technology and it looked really I mean it looked cool looking but it was still uncanny valley and I also don't want to see like I don't want you, Joe, to have to see a 3D representation of my face with every pop mark and pimple and everything. It's like, it's like, uh, it's like, that's too much. Actually, that's a really good point. I will drive over to your house and smack you upside the head. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think the, a lot of people don't appreciate how high resolution the video is nowadays. Mm -hmm. And so you see people from TV or movies will be in some press discussion and they'll, they'll get close enough to them that you see all the details. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's really shocking. It's like yeah. the amount of stuff on their face. Well, exactly. It's like Jason Kalkenis. He likes to use Zoom and put on like, the, make me look like I'm 20. And then when you see him without his crypt, ah, cussed. It's a crypt keeper. When you see him without the, without the makeup, it's really bad. You're like a one-man demonetization army. I pretty much am, dude. So anyways, uh, Logan, in it. I know, Logan Kilpatrick. So he was the uh, leader of DevRel OpenAI. His leaving... To go what to is he doing? Do, 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 Google. And so if I could, if the soundboard worked, it's a ha ha Mexican sound. Ha ha ha. Maybe, ha, ha, ha yeah. Ha, ha. Yeah. Maybe he thinks of this like if he can make DevRel work at Google, despite the number of times they've screwed this up, he'll have achieved something spectacular. Maybe that's his thinking. I feel like one. me going to work I'm... on privacy at Facebook. I'm the one who can get that Instagram thirst trap right. to see things my right. way. I can right. get her to love me and Only change Nixon her ways. Only Nixon can go to China. Exactly. And so I look at this. Okay, there's the m and person in me is Uncle – some VP was like, oh, they really like a DevRel guy. Let's hire him. Give him a fat pay package, whatever he wants. Like, not whatever, but double, or double what he's got or something. Give him a bigger title. There's that aspect. Um, there's your aspect of what you mentioned of, oh, I'm the one who can fix all this stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Before I was thinking, hmm, it's interesting that he's leaving. Is there some like something going on here right. at OpenAI? Right. But now it's like, oh, he, this is a, it's him going a step up in his career, but then going into a slower car or a rocket ship that was going to Mars and instead to a rocket ship that might get to the moon. Maybe we'll see how it goes. So it's a career step up, but he's then going into a worse, a worse business model. And yeah, and I, I remember that Google had just the worst time helping developers, and and 
understanding the kind of things that developers needed. Right. And they would routinely stomp on developers by taking their best ideas and implementing them right. or last second changes to an API without warning. I mean, right. it was just like, it was clear they just had no understanding of how to run a developer community. And then when Microsoft sort of woke up and started competing against Google apps, they, I mean, it was amazing how good they were at working with uh, corporate developers and IT departments. They just crushed Google apps. It was brutal. Exactly. They sat and they started listening. I, I remember Aditya told me he dealt with three different cloud vendors, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. And Amazon, which is like, this is what we have, AWS, take it or leave it, we're making too much money. And then when Microsoft stepped to the stage, they're like, I want to sit and listen and talk to you. What do you need? How can we help? How can we better? We want to repair this relationship. And then Google was mm -hmm. still kind of wonky. And then eventually Thomas Kurian replicated that. And Google people were constantly hounding him now for business and wanting to understand him. Right. But um, that was on the cloud side, right? Right. Right. I'm not talking about the developer side, but it kind of goes to your point of just like uh, Google doesn't really understand how to de build a developer no, ecosystem. Not, they're horrible. To they're really bad at it. God. And and uh, I was I was talking to one of our friends, and he mentioned Google has so many AI products, and I think it will, this person's an engineer in a fan company. Uh, Google has so many AI products, and I think it will be a fight between Google and AI with Google Cloud. Google Cloud has no AI expertise, and their portal is very hard to use. Um, Google Cloud portals and products, and honestly, Google CEO do not understand AI, and they lack vision. OpenAI is way ahead than any other AI company in terms of dev ecosystem. The reason why he's going is he will make a lot of money. <laughs> so... <laughs> It also, uh, he, the, he's getting the shine probably. They're telling him, oh, you're going to be able to just control everything like open AI and you can That's make a big the impact. Worst part. And that you're is gonna the worst impact. part. And then he's yeah. going to get there and it's here's the pounds and pounds of bureaucracy. Oh, you want to make one yeah. decision? Sorry, you pissed off a VP over here. Next yes. time run it through a VP. Oh, sorry, the VP's always busy. So now you have to slow, slow down your whole entire iteration cycle. Oh, we don't want you to be saying those certain things on Twitter. It's a little bit too edgy. It's pissing off And we have customers. 16 corporate initiatives that your project's got to support. I mean, it, it's going to be like, you know, going from, I don't know, the wind at your back mm -hmm. to swimming in molasses. Exactly. He's going to, and I felt that when I went from Google swimming in molasses, and then when I went to Slack, it was just wind at your back. What do you want to build? What do you want to do? Okay, great. We trust you. Good luck. And if anything messes up, I'll, I'll, the, the person above you, I'll take the blame and whatnot and protect you so long as you will justify what you did. Complete opposite over there. Uh, mm -hmm. So he, he's a good dude. Um, I got invited to this private. Uh, open AI forum where they reach out to community like developers, non-developers, and they bring in AI researchers to do presentations and research. I'm actually going to San Francisco today because they're going to have one researcher talk about um, backdoors to LLMs and adversarial networks. Mm -hmm. I need to read a research paper. Uh, but I got to see Logan and say hello to him. I don't really know him or whatnot. But you see, I mean, based on his Twitter, he seems super well-respected in the AI community and people really do like him. And I liked him based upon how he was interacting with people and just how engaged he was. So I wish mm -hmm. him the best. I hope he's successful. If it doesn't work out, I'll be parachutes for their small, medium sized company where he has more control and power. Um, let's go to the next thing. Mm -hmm. International business times. 40% of companies will use AI to interview job applicants report says. <laughs> AI is, yeah, this is, this is complete. AI is playing a key role in radically transforming the recruitment process for open positions. Technology is also affecting the way candidates respond to job postings. Nearly all Fortune 500 companies, 99%, are using the new Fangle technology to automatically filter applicants during the recruitment process. I call that fake news because there are states mm -hmm. already in the United States. Uh, states are in the United States. There are states that are already making laws saying you cannot reject candidates based upon AI. So I call hmm. that into question. And I also went to my little uh, perplexity uh, copy called ChatGPT and asked it, list the states that have some sort of AI regulation against using AI for hiring. Several states in the US have enacted or are considering laws that regulate the use of artificial intelligence in hiring and employment practices. Illinois has enacted the Artificial Intelligence Video Interview Act, requiring employers to notify applicants of their use for AI, analyzing video interviews and obtain consent. New York City, uh, pass a law requiring employers to inform candidates of the use of AI and hiring process and to conduct bias audits on AI tools. Maryland followed Illinois with a law restricting use of facial recognition during pre-employment. California's proposed bills that regulating AI and hiring, including requ requiring impact assessments for automated decision-making tools and providing consumers the right to, to request manual reviews. 
DC proposed a Stop Discrimination by Algorithms Act aimed at preventing algorithm discrimination. New Jersey proposed a bill that would make it unlawful for automated decision systems to discriminate against members of protected classes. And the list goes on. Now, here's an interesting aspect. This is so funny because my understanding is that they routinely screen out candidates based on simple keyword matching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's already screening going on based on keyword matching. But as far Why as- we need to pass all these funky laws about using an AI? I mean, keyword matching is just brutal. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the exact words, and then it's not, there's nothing subtle about it, right? They're not doing any kind of a fuzzy match or anything. If you don't have the exact words they want to see, your resume gets dropped. And it's why tons of people have just given up to applying for, for jobs online. Exactly. That's why I tell folks, if you, before you apply for, well, don't apply for a Fang company, please go to a small, medium-sized business. But if Fang is what you want to do, first check your LinkedIn network and see if you can get a referral inside because mm -hmm. you're going to the front of the castle wall and there's moats, there's archers, there's Greek fire, <laughs> everything. You're just going to get eaten up by any little thing on your resume. So yeah. I was talking to my friend who listens to the show about AI and banking. And he, he's, he, he yeah. was talking to someone who was at a, a, a large bank and they're focusing on technology. And he asked him like, so what AI are you going to be integrating into your products? And he said, well, actually we're not, we're planning not to, do barely any AI integration because uh, even though the EU AI Act allows us to do some aspects, we're worried that down the road, more regulation will be passed that are going to ban in more certain aspects of AI. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. right now, our best options sit and hold tight. And so if I was a CHRO right now, mm -hmm. these, these companies, and knowing all these states are going to start as time goes on, passing more bills and legislation about banning the use of AI for HR, for applicant processes for recruiting, then I would say mm -hmm. to myself, do I really want to make an ask to finance that we should spend X millions of dollars on this new AI recruiting portal? Or what should I do focus on is internally, we have this gigantic customer service arm for for HR. What's, when, is, when can I sign up for 401k? When's open enrollment? All that stuff's not regulated. You could spend mm -hmm. your resources there and start automating that work to free more hands in HR to work on more important things. Absolutely. So that's or or you know replacing customer support like level zero customer support. That's exactly. perfect for a AI system. Exactly. So for all y'all, um, and the only reason why I know about this is because I got thrown into customer service. Please kill me. Uh, tier zero support is basically when you go to an FAQ page in in your internal portal. Uh, tier one is when you actually speak to a human. Then tier two mm -hmm. is when you speak to like a specialist. The goal is you're going to have tier zero now being powered with AI so it can actually filter out tier one. And, and yeah, and most of tier one too. I mean, yeah. until you get to like usually at a bank, it's like tier two or tier three before the person mm -hmm. can actually do anything on your behalf. Up exactly. to there, it's just they're just either automated systems providing information or a human being who can only provide information. Right. I was at Dreamforce and uh, first Dreamforce I went to was last year and it was, it was pretty, it was awesome. It was all in on AI and they were talking about Salesforce call centers are using AI. They've had a dramatic reduction in employee churn and they're also seeing they no longer need specialists. Like I am the specialist talking about automotive insurance. I am the specialist on homeowners insurance. If you set the correct RAG pattern, the right LLMs, you can get generalists who can then ask the system questions or the system can intercept the person's question and then give them enough information to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. So anyways, let's go to our last topic before we get into research. So um, let's, we're going to do research. We're going to thank God we're going to do research. I can't, I can't wow. wait. Um, so That's we're, radical. we're going to go into our, uh, drug plan, yeah. I got in the taxi and went to treatment. <laughs> we're going to go into our drug test segment, which everyone, everyone likes. So. Oh my God. Okay. So, Wow, I can't wait. Uh, while speaking to Business Insider, an AI safety researcher and, dire and director of cybersecurity laboratory at University of Louisville, Ramon Yampolowski, disclosed that the probability of AI ending humanity is much higher because Elon said 20%. He referred to Musk's 10 to 20% estimate as too conservative. The AI safety researcher says the risk is exponentially high, referring to as PDOOM. For context, PDOOM refers to probability of general AI taking over humanity or even worse, ending it. Um, so he mentions that most I'm sure his PDOOM is greater than 1.0. Exactly. Most researchers and executives <laughs> familiar with PDOOM place the risk of AI taking over humanity anywhere between 5 to 50%, as seen in the New York Times. On the other hand, Jan Polowski says the risk is extremely high, with a 99.9999% probability. The researcher says it's virtually impossible to control AI once superintelligence is attained, and the only way to prevent this is not to build it. <laughs> 
<laughs> so that's for our drug, drug test drug segment test. today. What if it? What if the super intelligence goes back in time and convinces us to develop it? Oh, it already has, Joe. Maybe we're working for them. I mean, once you once you go into this limbo of ridiculousness, you might as well just go all the way. Uh, pretty much. No, no reason to stop at the threshold. Just jump into the pool of both feet. Exactly. Just just go all in. So last thing, um, this is kind of an alpha idea. I get folks who are reaching out to us saying, hey, why don't you go to Discord? Sorry, Discord. And I'm like, oh, I, have, I have a Facebook group right now. But sorry, Discord. We don't have enough resources and time. All the cool kids are on Discord. But all the kids are on, cool kids on Discord. And someone came up to me and said, hey, well, you know, actually, it'd be great because you all go through research. And it's a place for all of us to talk about research and be network. And then maybe look at share AI tech and news that we're seeing, and then talk about maybe some more startups. And say, okay, fair. So, want to uh, propose this all to you? Let me know what you think in the comments section. So basically, this group would just be for the sick podcast um, uh, community, and it's for AI for us to talk about research papers, networking, share information on AI and tech. It's not a pitch fest. People go in there to just start sharing their product 24 7 and trying to close candidates um or potential customers <laughs> and it's not a place for politics no 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 place for politics um so the thing though is we start this community we need your support we need your support in one we need mods so if you're interested in being a mod just send me a message at info at svinvestorsclub.com that's i-n-f-o at svinvestorsclub.com let me know uh, why you want to be a mod and maybe send me a linkedin uh, your linkedin profile so i know you're not a russian bot or it could be you know a nigerian bot either way no bots period and then um the work loads probably an hour a week as far as how this community will operate to get in uh, supporters uh, who pay five bucks a month for patreon or who, who support here on patreon and then people who are paying 2.99 a month on youtube get access uh, to to this group. Why do we have a paywall? One protects against spots. Second, it keeps this group self sustainable. So it gives us mm -hmm. funds to reinvest in the community, and maybe if it gets bigger enough, then mods who are helping can get a little bit of money. So let me know what you all think about that. Now that's that's it for that plug, and let's go to research, which we love talking about. So we're going to start with in um, realm reference resolution oh, yeah. as a language modeling. So. The paper topic, uh, the research paper discusses how to improve the way that large language models like well-known GPT-3 and 4 deal with understanding references or mentions of things with a conversation or on a device screen. This is a key for making conversations with AI more s seamless and intuitive. Problem addressed. The challenge solved here is how to get AI to correctly understand and link messages of subjects or objects in a conversation to the right context mm -hmm. entities, even when these entities are not directly involved in the dialogue. So if you're on your cell phone, and you're speaking to like let's say it's the ai powered siri and you say there's like there's 50 options for something something to eat on yelp and you want to book book a reservation and you say okay book the reservation on the one in the middle of my screen it, there's nothing that can tell it what the middle of your screen is unless it's using like gpt4 vision but then that's extremely compute expensive and also energy inefficient to use in your mobile phone so the solution is the researchers found a way to turn the problem of reference resolution into a language modeling issue that AI can understand, which is a big deal since normally AI has trouble with non-textual entities. Basically means now the uh, their solution is using text to tag certain elements on your phone. So then your phone, when you say, hey, book me uh, a reservation, it's in the middle of the screen, it then knows what you're what you're talking about and doesn't have to call in a more expensive model to understand, which then means mm -hmm. it, it uses less compute and less of your battery. Um, they develop a system that does this a lot better than previous ones with their small say uh, model making significant improvements and even comparing well with the latest and greatest models like GBD4. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, Joe, that's my uh, three-year-old understanding of it. Anything you thought was interesting in that one? A couple things. Uh, I think everything you said is, is great. Um, you can feel that the Apple researchers are really